Today, we're going to be talking about the case of Hong Myoku. This isn't exactly a true crime case, it's more of a beauty obsession gone wrong. This is going to be the story of Hong Myoku, who was a South Korean model and singer, and she was very beautiful, but her tragic obsession with the beauty standards ultimately led her on a spiral downfall of plastic surgery after plastic surgery until the point where she started injecting herself and trying to do procedures by herself. And this ultimately led to a horrible facial disfiguration, various health problems, and just changing her life completely for the worse. Now before we get started, let's talk a little bit about Miyoku and how everything kind of came into play. How did the Korean dubbed Brooke Shields turn into the Korean fan lady, was her nickname given by the people. So it all basically started when Miyoku was young. She grew up poor and didn't really have much from what I've read as a, as a child and growing up and one of her goals ultimately was to uplift her family and you know kind of give back to them and be the breadwinner of her family and I get it like who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want to you know take care of your family and give back to them for everything that you've done. Well, Miyoku fortunately did find some luck in her early 20s. She actually was able to book different gigs as a singer and an actress in Japan. And this led to multiple different, you know, jobs and gigs and just her success was kind of on the rise and everything was going quite well. However, it should be noted that Miyoku was said to have an unhealthy obsession even at a young age with her appearance. She would constantly be looking at herself in the mirror and telling herself that she wants better skin, a better jawline, a better nose, etc. Her friends and family would say that she was often caught just staring at the mirror for long periods of time, probably thinking, contemplating about her own beauty and how she could improve upon it. For those of you guys that know, I think a lot of you do, Korea, as well as Japan and a lot of different Asian countries have unhealthily high beauty standards. Well, okay, listen, the whole world has has high beauty standards, right? If you really get into the nitty gritty. I don't think I have to say this, but you guys probably already know it. Social media, our planet is at an all time low for the stigma regarding just social media and unhealthy beauty obsessions, beauty norms and standards that are being set for young, you know, women and just people all around the world. Growing up with impossible standards to meet is unhealthy in and of itself. And it just makes the pressure of society that more difficult. And Korea is one of those countries where it's just a lot worse than a lot of other places. And that is kind of what Miyoku had had to grow up in. And that only kind of played things worse for her own obsession. So by age 28, you know, she's kind of in her late 20s now and she's starting to think, okay, I'm I'm getting old. I I'm gonna get wrinkles. I, I need to I need to keep my beauty, my youth, but you know, how can I do that? So she gets her first medical procedure done. I think her first procedure was like a Botox injection to get rid of some wrinkles around her eyes or, or maybe her forehead. And then she went on to get her nose done and skin and other things. Allegedly, the first procedure that she actually got done was kind of like under the table at this shady practice because she couldn't afford legitimate surgery. So she opted for kind of this shady way where this surgeon or doctor, I don't even know if they were licensed. They gave her procedures, but they weren't really the best. And even though it wasn't the best health-wise, Miyoku was satisfied with her temporary improvement of her looks. She was satisfied that, okay, my wrinkles are temporarily gone. Uh, I can fix my face like this. But the one thing she didn't take into account was that you just can't beat time because she was already obsessed with her beauty and now she became obsessed with plastic surgery. It wasn't too bad at first, but she was starting to get procedure after procedure and probably going back to this shady practice because she just couldn't afford to get, you know, actual procedures done at legitimate places. And because she just kept getting so many procedures done at these places that weren't really legitimate, her face actually started to swell. And you can see a couple photos of her by her early to mid thirties where it's noticeably swollen. It's not too bad at this time, but you can definitely see something looks a little bit wrong, right? A little bit of miss. 
The procedures that she was getting at the time, I mean, one of the reasons they weren't the best was because whatever foreign materials they were injecting into her skin were not all comprised of the proper materials that you're supposed to be injecting. That, on top of constantly getting procedure after procedure of these harmful chemicals and, and materials that are being put into your face, it's no wonder why her face began to swell. By her late 30s, her face was even more swollen, and it was at that time where her family began to criticize her for, for her looks and for her obsession. But unfortunately, Miyoku just, she did not want to hear it. In fact, it's said that around this time, she actually started to hear other voices, and those voices were in her head. She heard things telling her that she wasn't beautiful enough, she wasn't pretty enough, and she wasn't good enough, and she only felt better after she got a procedure done. However, these good feelings didn't last, they were only temporary, and those voices would soon come back and she would then opt in to get another procedure done. It was later on discovered, I think Miyoko was diagnosed with schizophrenia, and that's why she was kind of hearing these voices and having these thoughts and just being, you know, just deluded from reality. Due to her mental health as well as her face just getting more and more swollen, it started to become extremely hard for Miyoku to, to book gigs and get jobs, and eventually she had to move back home with her family. And even though her family did criticize her for all these procedures and her beauty obsession, they did try to help, you know, they let her move back in, they kind of helped her financially. But the problem is, one of the ways they tried to help was, the way they saw it was they thought, okay, our daughter, our, our family member is obsessed with her beauty, she's obsessed with getting these cosmetic procedures, how can we, how can we fix this? How can we get her to just be okay? And so their answer was to pay for one final legitimate cosmetic procedure to give to Miyoku so that she would finally just be okay and she would be relieved and maybe she wouldn't want anything more after this. But the problem is that's not the answer to solve, you know, mental illnesses and things that are wrong with Miyoku. Obviously, this is like back in the 90s now, people, you know, there was a much bigger stigma around mental health and mental awareness and just what we knew and what we thought about mental health back then just isn't what it is now. So Miyoku unfortunately wasn't able to get the help that she needed. Because as soon as she did get this final procedure given to her by her family, she went right back to getting more. In fact, she was spending everything she had on getting these procedures. Eventually, the relationship with her family got so bad that she moved out and got cut off financially, no support from her family on top of her addiction, only making things worse. It then got so bad where she couldn't even afford procedures from these shady practices and she opted to just buy illegal fillers and try putting things into her face that you really shouldn't put into your face. She first tried injecting melted face cream into her face uh, just to see what it would do. I think it's pretty important to note that we're talking about facial cream that goes on the surface of your face, you know, the epidermal layer or whatever. This stuff is not, definitely not meant to go under your skin or in your body. So I think it's pretty clear how bad Miyoku's mental health was because she wasn't even able to realize such, you know, simple thing. And unfortunately, this wasn't even satisfying enough for her because it was at this point where she took things to the next level extreme. She then began injecting things like silicone and soy oil and then cement, liquid cement. She injected them into her face because she was just so obsessed with procedures and her beauty and just trying to make her face better that she lost sight of reality so badly that she began injecting just these poisonous, terrible foreign materials into her own face, which had detrimental effects in the end. Miyoku was left permanently disfigured, and this is kind of how she looked at the time. It was at this point, I think, where she's finally starting to catch on and finally starting to realize that, okay, you know, I, I have a problem, I have an issue. People avoided her when she walked down the street, kids made fun of her, she wasn't able to get any job anywhere because Nobody wanted to hire her, and this was her life for a while. Until, eventually, 
around 2004, a television station found out about her story and they decided to make a documentary series about it. It was discovered at the time that Miyoko was actually living in the dark in her small apartment for months because she couldn't even afford to pay the electricity bill. The docuseries that the television station created actually turned out to be one of the most successful shows they ever created. And support for Miyoku's story just came pouring in. In fact, there was so much support that uh, the show actually was able to raise money for reversal surgeries for Miyoku and they actually ended up raising 27 million won, which is like 24, $25,000. And so for the next few years, she went under procedure after procedure of reversing and taking out these foreign substances that are, you know, in her body and falling down her face and into her neck. And it's so bad at this point where it's, it's giving her neck problems, it's giving her breathing problems. The doctors even said that it's a miracle she hasn't gone blind. And so, after a long while and procedure after procedure, Miyoku finally can sort of have a normal life again. Despite taking out four kilograms of foreign substances that were stuck in her face and her neck, doctors had to remove a lot of skin and tissue. And even though she's healthier, she was still left disfigured. She wasn't able to close her eyes all the way because, you know, they had to cut some of the tissue for her eyelids and she didn't have enough eyelid tissue, so she has to constantly use eye drops for her eyes. There was also probably some nerve damage to her face, so that kind of affected her speech. But the most important thing, despite all this, she never got any more procedures done afterwards. She had a wake-up call and she could finally see clearly. She was changing her life for the better and taking things into a different direction. She even tried to apply for a job again after not having a job for many years. And although she was rejected by many different places and had a lot of quote unquote failed interviews, she was finally able to get a job from a uh, factory where she uh, peeled nuts at home for about 200 bucks a month. It's not the best job, but it's better than none. And the important thing is that Miyoku was taking some initiative and she was trying. And despite all of these hard and difficult times, Miyoku did have somebody in her life that did always support her. And that was her pet dog. She said that her dog was the only one that really believed in her and was always by her side. And her dog's name was Z. And she said that they were the only one always by her side and supporting her. And I'm just, oh, that makes me just so happy that you know, she had Z there with her and, you know, it's true, you know, like from my own experiences with dogs, I know dogs, uh, they don't judge, you know, they will love you wholeheartedly. And that's really what she needed. You know, she really needed somebody to just be there and love her and show her some support. And I'm so glad she had Z there with her. Now, eventually Z did pass away. And later on at the age of 57, Miyoku passed away as well. Her family held a private ceremony for her and wished her well and said their goodbyes. And that is the end of the story. All right, so my personal thoughts on this, I think I've made it clear, guys, is that beauty obsessions and beauty standards for the world should not be something that you just let affect you. And I know it's easier said than done, but for anyone out there that's, you know, suffering from just beauty obsession or any type of body dysmorphia, just know that there's always a way and you can always, you know, do better and, and work at yourself to be better. And I, I, I think this whole story is just kind of just, I think there is some takeaway to it. I wish the best for Miyoku and her family and Z. I hope she's finally at peace and that her family is as well. And I hope that you guys watching, you know, I, I hope this was a, I hope this was an okay video for you to watch and I'm sorry if it maybe triggered you or anything. But if you guys did enjoy it, then leave a like, comment down below what you thought about it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot you could say, but as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great day and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Good night.